Do you feel frustrated, unprepared, confused, or lost? Well, it's time to be happy because Geography World Channel is here to help. I see the comments and requests and I will act on them. Please remember to follow Geography World Channel on Instagram and Facebook using the link shown on the screen. Please remember to like, share with your friends and subscribe. For person wishing to contact me privately, you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com. The link will be posted below. Welcome back to Geography World Channel where today we'll be looking at the May-June 2017 Cape Geography Paper 2. So for this video we will analyze the answer for question 2. Now question 2 it looks at module 1 and we're given a table which shows forced migration by causes and age group in India and we're to answer the question that follows. So in this column we have the age group and here we have the different causes for forced migration so natural disasters social or political problems and displacement by development now section a it asks us to draw a well labeled chart or diagram to illustrate the displacement of the 0 to 19 age group the so 0 to 19 this data here going across this is what we have to use to, cal to draw or create a well-labeled chart or graph. Now, you are given the opportunity to choose one of your choice. So you can do a pie chart or a, ba a bar graph or a histogram. So you have the option to choose one. So I did a pie chart here. However, if you're doing a pie chart, you will have to go ahead and calculate how the sector should be the sector for it how the sector should be divided so what you have to do is that for example to find for the natural disaster you'd have to say 54.5 divided by 100 multiplied by 360 because remember the circle it basically measures 360 so when you're finished trying to get the sector for the three causes you should get 196.2 for the natural disaster which is here 77.76 for social political or political problems and you should get 86 for displacement by development so this is one way that you can do it if you don't want to have to do any of the maths to calculate the sectors you can just go right ahead and create a bar graph or a histogram using the information presented so create your x your y axis and your x axis and then you start to plot your points right remember the bar graph is equally spaced while the histogram you can join it so locate 54.5 and you put your first bar for natural disaster 21.6 you do the same and 23.9 and remember to label your x and your y axis and remember to give your graphs a title so whether it's a bar graph or a histogram or it's a pie chart the data that is being shown is the causes of displacement of this 0 to 19 age group Anyone you want to draw, any one of the graph you want to use, once it is properly done, you should be awarded four marks. Now, question two asks us to use in, using suitable example where to describe two ways in which persons may be internally displaced. Now, we talk about internal displacement. It basically refers to a person or group of persons who have been basically who have been forced to flee their homes right now these are persons who are forced to leave their home now some of the causes may include violent conflicts such as crime crime and violence in their communities right it can be natural disasters such as flooding hurricanes earthquakes 
it can be that the government they have some governmental policies that was implemented that caused them to flee their community right you can have um, infrastructural development which forces persons to leave and you can also have social or political problems which basically force persons to leave so the situation has to force a person within the community to leave right so based on which tool you want to use you have to now go ahead and provide examples in your description in order to be awarded the marks section c as it states that two contrasting views of population growth were proposed by theorists malthus and buzzerup now you're to evaluate the views of each theorist with respect to population growth and food supply and you have to include re um, examples in your response. Now, Malthus, he basically suggested that the geometric increase in population would basically outstrip the arithmetic growth of food supply, and without the checks and balances of famine and war, a population would outrun the limits of the environment to support it. Now, he believes that the checks could be positive, and when we talk about positive check, this refers to basically circumstances that leads to a reduction in the population size. So he believes that famine, war, and disease are be classified as positive checks, while we have negative checks, or they're also called preventative checks, and these are the ones that limit growth, such as late marriages and abstinence. Now, just to summarize or to give a little bit more. Malthus believed that the population is if the population continues to grow at such an alarming rate, right, there will be a time when the population will outrun the resources that we have. So we'll have more persons than resources. So the population will become overpopulated. the world will become overpopulated. Now he believed that if certain checks, whether positive or negative, are not in implemented then the population will become high right so positive checks are the ones that basically cause a reduction in the size the population size so if there is a war for example world war one and world war two right the disease or if there is famine right he believe that the the negative checks, however, they just help to limit the growth or slow down the growth of the population. So he encourages late marriages and abstinence. Now, when you're explaining Malthus part of the theory, you can make mention. If you're going to expound on the famine section, you can speak about famine in Africa. If you're going to talk about war, they can look at the war between the war in Iran or Iraq or the Palestine. If you're going to talk about the disease, you can talk about the corona disease, coronavirus that is affecting us worldwide. So that is Malthus theory. Now, when we talk about Buzzerup's theory now, she looks at the whole population and resources a different way from Malthus. Now, she asserts that an increase in the population would basically lead to an increase in innovation and invention. So she believes that, listen, necessity is the mother of invention. She believes that the higher the population, the higher the population, right, the more technological development and technological development is basically determined by the demographic change. So the more persons are born, the more advanced the technological development will become. Now, she believes that the future started and the, the, what happens that the population change stimulates change in agricultural system, for example, agricultural intensification, right? So in other words, it is in the increase in demand that is responsible for the pressure to change agricultural production. So. What Esther Bazarop is saying is that, listen, the smaller the population, the less developed we will be, right? Because she's saying that the, the popul size of the population is basically what is forcing or causing an 
increase in development right so the more persons we have is the more pressure that is placed on technological development so the higher the population the more technologically de developed we are because we have to cater to the needs good so it's back in the days yes our grandparents used to form but they used to form um extensively right now on the same piece of land that they had if farming is still being done on it it's being done intensively right so back in the days when it was the mango season if you didn't eat your belly full of mango then it means that once the season is out that is it now if you want to eat mango all year round you can just go to the supermarket and pick up a tin of mango right you can just go to the market and pick up a tin of aki remember those are seasonal food right however we can get it all year round that's how esther buzzerup looked at it right so the demand from the population will basically force te um, technological development right first time when our grandparents would plant the ground let's say corn right they would get for example you know a good amount of corn and they can plant back from it now the crops that we have nowadays they have gmos in them they have been they have gmos in them so what will happen is that once they are planted they're expected to yield a lot so once when my grandfather used to plant and he'll get like one corn from a plant you now you can get three corns from one plant just an example right so because of the gmos in the crops and the different technological advancement that we have esther is saying that the population will not outgrow our resources as soon as the population increases so will our resources we are at the end of this video thank you for watching and please remember to like share subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on in the comment section below comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video until then bye